Hi everyone! In this video we're going to look at Facefront's upcoming Paradise in Flight collection. This is their release for the spring-summer 2012 season. This collection includes permanent items as well as a line of brand new product which is the flashlight highlight powders. For this collection, Facefront wanted to concentrate on colors that really illuminated the skin and gives it a really nice glow. So we'll take a look at a lot of the duochromed colors and really shimmery colors in this collection. This collection will come out January 27th in the United States and January 25th in Brazil. And you can purchase these items online at facefront.com. As always, please check out allurebeauty.com if you want to see in-depth written reviews and more detailed photographs and swatches of all of these colors. First, let's take a look at the pressed eyeshadows. These are $11.50 each. The colors from left to right are Printed, Oh So Fofo, King's Crown, and Stonework. These are all limited edition colors except for Printed, which is the first one on the left. So as always, I will swatch these over an eyeshadow primer, and I'm going to pick up each color with a dense eyeshadow brush, like so. So here's the first color, which is Printed. And this is a deep matte black color. You can tell when you pick the color up on the eyeshadow brush that the formula is quite soft and creamy, so it applies very smoothly on the skin. Second is Oso oh Fofo, and this color has a pewter finish, meaning it has very shimmery finish to it. And both of these colors have great pigmentation. And again, the formula is soft and applies very smoothly. This is a medium bubble gum pink color that has very finely milled silver shimmers in it. Third is King's Crown. And this color is like an old or vintage gold color. Pigmentation, or I should say the color payoff, isn't quite as strong as with these first two colors, but it is pretty decent, and I suspect with layering you can build up that finish. So this color also has a pewter finish, and again is that antique kind of mustardy gold color. And fourth is Stonework. This is a medium purple color has a hint of gray tone to it, but not much. So when this color actually has great color payoff. And again, this color has a pewter finish. There are very, very subtle silver shimmers to it, and it doesn't have the same frosty, glimmery finish as these two middle colors, but it does have that subtle hint of shimmer. So here are your four colors up close. I like that there's a range of shimmery finishes. So you have this matte black here, and you have these two more glimmery or, or frosty finishes here, and then you have an in-between color that has very subtle shimmers. So you get a good range, and these do have good to very good color payoff and pigmentation, and the formula is quite soft and smooth. Next we have the four artistic pigments. All of these are limited edition colors. They are $10.50 each. The colors from left to right are Lots of Lettuce, Flamingo Disco, Motivate Me, and Toucan Tango. So again, these will be swatched over an eyeshadow primer. And the way that I swatch these is that I pick up the product like this, I press the product into the bristles of the brush, and then I swatch. So first is Lots of Lettuce. This is a pale green color, sort of like a pale leprechaun green. It has an immense amount of silver shimmers in it. This color has good pigmentation and color payoff. It applies evenly and smoothly, and it has an ultra steel finish, which is very appropriate because it has such an intensely shimmery finish. Next is Flamingo Disco. This is a pale pink, again with an incredible amount of pale pink and silver shimmers. This is an absolutely beautiful color and the amount of <laughs> frost um, and shimmer in the finish is 
more than I think I've seen in any other pigment. So it also has an ultra steel finish, meaning that it has a high glitter finish. Again, it applies smoothly and has good color payoff. Third is Motivate Me. This is a, in the, in the uh, jar it looks like a medium purple, but swatched. It's a pale purple color, medium toned, and has light purple and silver shimmers. Again, has an ultra steel finish. I'm building up just with a little more pigment to try to intensify the finish. So I don't think this color has as good color payoff but it does have a very beautiful shimmery finish. I do wish though that the underlying purple pigment were a little stronger. You can see here on this portion of the skin that the pigment doesn't even really show up here. It's more of just the, the glitters here. Fourth is Toucan Tango, and this one has probably the best color payoff of the four colors. It has light golden shimmers in it. Also, again, an ultra steel finish color, so it has high shine to the finish. And this is a medium tangerine color. Applies very smoothly and evenly. So here are the colors up close. Again, they're absolutely beautiful. The finishes are so pretty with the high glitter. The most impressive, I think, is to Contango that orange color on the far right. I think the most disappointing color is Motivate Me, this purple color here, just because the underlying purple pigment isn't as opaque or as present as I think it should be. These pigments can also be used wet, so you can foil them. So I've used the same method of application, except that I've sprayed the brush with a mixture of glycerin and water, which is usually how I foil my pigments. So we'll start again with lots of lettuce. And as you can see, you get a little more of a, like a steel finish to the color. And the green is a little deeper in hue. Second is Flamingo Disco. And again, the pink hue is a little deeper, but you still get that beautifully shimmery finish. Third is Motivate Me. Again, the purple color gets deepened. With this color, I feel like the purple is deepened more noticeably than with the first two colors. Again, just like one swatch dry, it doesn't go on completely evenly or as consistently opaque as these first two colors. And fourth is Toucan Tango. And this color has a little more of a frost finish to it when applied wet. I would say that's true for most pigments that have shimmer in them and then get swatched in a foiling method. And again, a little deeper orange color. All right, so there are the four colors foiled. Overall, you get a little deeper hue for each of the colors, and then you get a more frosty finish, meaning that instead of having a distinct underlying pigment and then shimmers on top that you can sort of see, which is what you get when you swatch these dry. When you swatch them wet, you get a little more cohesive of a surface, meaning that it looks like the shimmer is mixed in and is one with the underlying pigment. I also suspect that these will look very beautiful over some sort of base. So for example, like a white base and that it will bring out the shimmers even more. Um, I will show you pictures of that, but I will save that for the written review. All right, so I was just going to save this for the written review, but I'm going to show you. I swatched the same colors dry over an eyeshadow base. This is NYX's eyeshadow base with pearl. So this is the shimmery white one, and this is what you get. So, I mean, these colors perform very well on their own, just over a primer, but as I suspected, over a base, the color intensifies, that shimmer is just increased even more, and you get such a beautiful finish there. Next, we have the three limited edition cream illuminator colors, and these are $11 each. From left to right, you have defrosting, I need fudge, 
and dulce de leche. First is defrosting, and this is a medium pink color with a tint of mauve, and it has a silvery finish to it. It goes on very, very smoothly. The formulation is quite creamy to the touch, and so it applies effortlessly. Second is I Need Fudge, and this is a chocolate brown color, again with sort of a frosty finish, not as much as with defrosting here. So this has more distinct shimmers in the finish than I Need Fudge that does, but it has a, still a sheen to it. And third is Dulce de Leche, and this one is a light caramel or tan color. Again, has kind of a dewy finish to it, but without any sort of shimmer. So in terms of illumination, this definitely can be used on the lids or on the cheekbones, even under the brows, for a highlighting effect. This color here is going to be not as appropriate as perhaps a highlighter, but can still be used for an illuminating effect, or if you want this kind of finish, say, in the center of the lid. And Dulce de Leche is a little more versatile, I think, because it's more transparent, it's more translucent in finish, and so it's going to be able to be used in more contexts than, say, I Need Fudge. Facefront has actually reformulated the cream illuminators, and you can definitely tell that when you touch the surface of the product. They are cream illuminators from before. They were creamy and they applied pretty well, but these are much more emollient, and so they apply a lot easier onto the surface of the skin. Here are the three flashlight highlight powders from this collection. They are $17 each. This is a brand new product for Facefront. The colors from left to right are autofocus, double exposure, and gamma ray. So that you can see the color better, I'll swatch these with an eyeshadow brush. So the first color is autofocus, and this is a frosty, slightly off-white color with a lot of white shimmer. Second is double exposure, and this is more of a nude shimmer, again with white glitter in it. So this is more white toned and this is more skin toned. And third is Gamma Ray, which is pink toned, again with a bunch of white shimmer in it. For a more realistic view, I'm going to swatch these with an angled brush. So first we have Autofocus, and it still gives off this very, very intense shimmer and color. So you might actually want, if you want a more subtle effect, you might want to apply these with a fan brush or a duo fibered brush. Second is double exposure, and once these are blended out more, you get a very similar effect, so the color is pretty close. This first color is a little more of a cream, but once you blend it out, I think they'll look pretty much the same. And third is Gamma Ray. So you can see a subtle difference in color between these three, but like I said, I think once you blend them out, they'll be quite similar to each other. Next, we have two mineralized blushes. These are $15 each, and the colors are Fun Fair and Proper Peach. So again, with an eyeshadow brush, just to show you the color itself, this is Fun Fair. This is a slightly lilac-toned pink, with a ton of silver shimmers. This is Proper Peach, which is an apricot-y peach color, again with a ton of silver shimmer. Fun Fair has a steel finish, and Proper Peach has a pewter finish. Now with an angled brush, we have Fun Fair. And Proper Peach. So these are extremely shimmery. Proper Peach is less so than Fun Fair. It's also not as strong in pigmentation. I'm gonna layer one more time just to make sure it's not my swatching. 
So proper peach, not as pigmented and also not as shimmery. I mean, Funfair just has, it's just jam-packed with shimmer. I don't know actually how appropriate these would be for blushes. They certainly would make beautiful highlighters, but I think that especially with Funfair, it's just a little too shimmery to be all over the cheek. Proper Peach is a little more reasonable in that area, but I do wish that the pigmentation were stronger so that you would get more of that peach color. Last are the five liquid lipsticks. These are $12.50 each. The colors from top to bottom are In Motion, Moto Taxi, Purest Sin, Purest Sin, Heat Stroke, and It's a More. So I'm simply going to swatch these one by one. First is In Motion, and Face Front suggests that you use this as a layering over another lipstick. So this is a white color with a lot of pearlized pigments. Second is Moto Taxi, which is a bright yellow color and has a shine finish, but not with the distinct pearls of In Motion here. Third is Purest Sin which is a white that has a finish more similar to Moto Taxi here. It doesn't have the, again, distinct pearls as In Motion does. Fourth is Heat Stroke. And this is more of a slightly orange tinted coral color. And it doesn't have the shimmer or frost of the previous colors. It does have a shine because it's a liquid lipstick, but the pigment itself is a matte. And last is It's a More, which is more of a rose colored pink. And this also has sort of the sheen finish of these two colors here. So these do glide on very easily. I'm not sure about the application in terms of the finish being even. I do see these two colors maybe not having as even pigmentation or opacity as these two pink colors, but I'll have to see how they apply to the lips. And then this in motion color I think would be beautiful over any sort of lipstick. You could use it sheer so that that underlying color can still show through, but then you have all these pearlized pigments on the top. These two colors, I you know, you can use them for a more artsy look, but they aren't going to be as practical as, say, the last two colors here. Overall, I think this is an excellent collection. I actually think it's probably one of the best face front collections that I have reviewed so far. I absolutely love the artistic pigments. They are just beautiful on the skin. I also do like the new product, which is the flashlight highlighting power. They give high shimmer to the skin and they are pretty finely milled, so it won't look too gaudy. You won't have chunks of glitter on your cheeks. The cream illuminators, I like that they've reformulated those. They are creamier and they do glide on more easily. I don't especially like the mineralized blushes. I just think that the pigmentation is off and they're just way too shimmery for putting all over the cheeks. You definitely could use them as highlighters themselves. They would work great as that. But as mineralized blushes, I don't think that they're as suitable in that category. The liquid lipsticks, I don't have a defined opinion on yet. I mean, just like with you, this is my first time encountering these products and seeing how they perform, so I think I'll have to work with those a little bit in order to formulate a better opinion. And then the pressed eyeshadows also were pretty impressive in terms of color payoff and the formulation was nice and creamy and soft and applied smoothly. So overall, I think this is a great collection. Again, if you want to see written reviews and in-depth photos, go to alluriebeauty.com. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below or as comments to any of the posts on the blog, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.